Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Paul Seidler. Um, I'm an artist and researcher. Um, I think I work mostly with the medium of programming languages and I'm interested in smart contracts sort of as a medium. Um, so what technical affordance does a smart contract have and what does it mean to create the social, economic and technical constructs which can interact with infrastructure outside of a circus of circuit of art production? So my talk is mainly an exercise in forming a position towards smart contracts as artistic medium. Smart contracts are programs saved in decentralized ledger which can be executed by any person through a transaction. The best example to explain this is still a vending machine. You throw something in and you get something different out. Most of these transactions are containing value, so they're really a form of value systems. Technical, these programs are reactive in nature. That means they run only if someone calls them. Smart contracts in artistic productions are used today mainly as NFTs. So what is an NFT? Well, the problem starts there. In technical terms, an NFT is first and foremost a formal definition of a smart contract. That means the ERC721 proposal structure defined the way in which a smart contract can be programmed to work as a non-fungible token. So basically, an ID-based medium of exchange. Historically, it can be said that this standard, which probably defines now 95% of all artworks on the blockchain, was made by people who were not primarily interested in art. An NFT should have been used for more general functions. For example, property rights or physical property or negative value assets like that. In a medium-specific analysis, a NFT is so first and foremost a technical definition and a standard which only describes the artwork in terms of how it can be exchanged and how external data can be linked to it. The standard, therefore, neither defines what other medium is attached, nor does it leave code for the artist to write. It effectively proposes a perspective in which the code itself can never be considered the art. The art is something that's external which needs to be attached. It's almost as no one wants the artist to write code, right? As a medium for sales, NFTs work phenomenal. With basically various NFT summers where artists were selling all kinds of media wrapped up in an ERC through URLs. It just leads to a general conceptual impasse. If everything is a blockchain artwork that uses blockchain-based distribution mechanisms, any media specificality and difference is reduced in favor of a universal sales format. Or more specific, if NFT is everything, as a category of art, it ultimately has to fail. And this can be seen easily when talking to people who are not involved with NFTs. I don't get what they are, they're just pictures, might be on average what you get. This sort of resulting duality between artwork and software, between sort of a predetermined distribution mechanism and an artistic medium sort of complicates the concept of smart contracts as an independent self-referential medium. Looking at the state of the NFT ecosystem, we can assess that the majority of NFTs consist of largely unmodified template code, which points to a visual medium found at the endpoint of a URL. In this case, the only function of the smart contract is really to implement the transaction rules of the standard and to reference back to a selected medium. There is an almost platonic duality here of form and appearance, which is never be resolved and never discussed. The visual medium and the implemented code are sometimes fundamentally disconnected. Or to put it more simple, imagine net art happened, but all art pieces were just links to paintings because no one could actually write HTML. This is of course a polemic and reduces a social phenomena to a technical problem. And I'm convinced that Web3 monopolistic infrastructure effectively dictated the way in which we as artists interact with the medium of smart contracts. A short notice to this point. Even through this can be read as a critique of NFTs as a format, my main point here is not to reduce artworks to a pure technical treatment. NFTs helped a lot of artists sell digital art, which they probably otherwise had large problems to sell. So this is not a neither nor question, but rather a conceptual question how we can learn to distinguish artworks which use blockchain as a distribution medium and artworks which engage with the medium on a deeper technical or conceptual level. On the other hand, this sort of classification might also give space to think about works that consider smart contracts as a medium. 
And these works have a long tradition that predates NFTs. Ria Meyer's work is our token sets a general direction here. So if we want to find tools to conceptualize these works, we have to look at the technicalities of the medium itself. After the German media theorist Friedrich Kittler, we have to ask what is the a priori of a medium? What are the aspects that define the medium that we take for granted, but are essentially in defining any interaction? Or if you want to say it in German, some sentence you, can you can't really translate, welche technischen Vermittlungsverhältnisse sind einer gesellschaftlichen und sozialen Nutzung vorausgesetzt? Instead of looking at how people use the medium, the focus is rather different. What are the technical conditions of production? So I would sort of introduce here three sort of main points or three sort of thought lines in which I think smart contracts can be think differently or can be sought differently. One, you could think smart contracts as programs with limited computational capaci capacity. You could also think of them as multi-user systems or you could also think of them as rule-based systems for defining and automating economic flows. So smart contracts are too incomplete by design. That means they can seen as an almost post-conceptual form of writing. Through the transformation of science to instructions, the practice of coding becomes inherently self-referential, since the performance can only be evaluated through the compiling and the running of a program. The semantics of program code are novel insofar as they provide an immediate vector of utilization through the compiler itself. An idea itself can only become relevant through the proof of a successful operation. So, at this point, art historians like to mention people like Solivit, but I think there are also more, in the spirit of Kittler, interesting ideas we tend to forget, which are focused on the material base of computation. The most materialistic and experimental approach come in this sense from a scene that is largely ignored by fine arts, which is the demo scene. Born in the 80s, in the 80s with the advert of an increasingly general purpose computation, the demo scene produced real-time demos and animations running on really limited hardware, like for example the Atari 800. So you could say that the demo scene itself was only concerned with one specific question. How can one push an existing soft and hardware architecture to really create art? Uh, in a sense, a lot of on-chain art today resembles this approach. How can the virtual Ethereum machine, so how can the machine which runs on top of the blockchain, be pushed it to its maximum? Um, the EVM itself, since it's too incomplete, can generate all kinds of formats like SVGs, HTML, or bitmaps. And they look distinctly different from what you would consider normally an NFT. Um, and that might be also a good entry point in discussing aesthetics of these things because they're naturally uh, more akin to what Tito Steyer calls the poor image because they're restricted by the technical possibilities of the EVM itself. So it's pretty hard to, for example, generate something which is larger than 512 pixels through the EVM. So we're talking here really about constrained computational environments. If you're interested in on-chain art, I would highly encourage anyone to look up the upcoming JPEG Canon, which is a community-curated list of on-chain projects. My own practice was using smart contracts to generate images and animations. Uh, started with a project which called, was called Temporal Successionism, which I worked on together with Max, Max Hamshio. Our thesis for this project can be summarized as following. Time arises in the boundaries of a concept's cognitive apparatus. As we increasingly rely on time-based systems, either conceptual or mechanical, on different technological strata, we must also realize that the system may make explicit the fact that time, far from being a single objective metric of reality, is a social technological construct, a way of forming consensus on reality and an ordering of events by itself. So in this project, we looked at various forms of mostly social technical forms of timekeeping, and map these forms onto clock surfaces, resulting in these sculptures, uh, which form different time zones across multiple exhibition spaces in Ljubljana, Athens, and Beijing. Uh, Amy Island wrote some texts, which would uh, be shown at the sculptures on the screen uh, and rearranged by the time mechanism. Um, asked to further develop this, um, we focus on an on-chain artwork. 
which in which we wanted to reduce the sculptural elements, interfaces, and basically also the self photos also of infrastructure. So the ability to generate image files, that means SVGs or bitmaps in smart contracts, was crucial to us. And with like Time Zone 4, that's the uh, title of the piece, we wanted to generate an artwork which is always changing its metadata and animation without relying on any external, external data source. Almost a self-contained imminent visualization of time in a global network of computation, which is only bound to its own temporal infrastructure. Temporal successionism in its purest form. So we looked at what the EVM actually can provide and we found that certain opcodes in the EVM uh, can give the timestamp of a current block. With this we could, with this and the deploy date, we could essentially calculate <laughs> always the block time of the blockchain itself and we would program an SVG, which was uh, generated by the contract, to always change its speed of animation compared to like the current block time. Um, this ended in this kind of animation which was a mo morphing notion uh, and always described or always showed the current block time. Every single uh, NFT had an individual minting block and because of this every pulse is different in the beginning but through the accumulation of blocks merged together in an endless process, one that will literally take forever. Every request to view the metadata might also change the animation. So in practice, this might be in the beginning specifically. The visual aesthetic of this NFT was generated completely on-chain through individual token IDs and the block hash, which is used for each token individual color scheme. There are 33 of these tokens. Another interesting um, notion I saw in which NFTs can be seen is as multi-user systems, and this is pretty uh, easy to understand when you see that a decentralized ledger is essentially a massive multiplayer game. Um, a link which can be made here is to video art, which I think is often referenced, um, but I think there's also a notion of multiplayer that gets f uh, goes further. In an art forum article from 1968, Jack Burham defines system aesthetics, and I will just quote from this. We are now transitioning from object-oriented to system-oriented culture. Here change emanates not from things, but from how things are done. A system's viewpoint is focused on the creation of stable, ongoing relationships between the organic and the non-organic system, be these neighborhoods, industrial complexes, farms, transportation systems, information centers, and so on. Intuitively, many artists have already grasped this relatively recent distinction and if the environments are only on the unsophisticated side, this will change over time. One could argue that smart contracts present an interesting medium for this approach of art making, as it can generate open and imminent circles. Smart contract based interaction systems are very real outside of a confined space of a gallery or museum. They are not simulated, or as Burnham calls it, a theater. The system approach goes beyond concerns with the stage environment. It deals in a revolutionary fashion with a larger problem of boundary and concepts. To work in this direction, um, I started working on Straylight Protocol. And Straylight Protocol is a generative multiplayer NFT game. Player move and reprogram computational agents with specific rule set over boards or worlds. And in this process, generate emergent visual pattern. The game is infinite in duration, cooperative and non-deterministic. Straylight uh, Protocol is built as an expression of on-chain maximalism. That means that everything, computation, state and graphics, are stored, executed and generated by the contract. So technically this is a, uh, this is a set of contracts which facilitates computation only through the uh, Ethereum virtual machine. All algorithmic agents contained are reprogrammable two-state termites, which are essentially really simple rule-based systems, rendering the system too incomplete. Every agent is embedded with other agents in an environment, making the system alternatively non-deterministic, generative, co and cooperative. In a sense, this is a non-conceptual work of art, because all the interactions are formalized by the program code itself. There is no mysticism, no hyperstition, no interpretation, no trusted third parties, no URLs, no additional servers. The code function as a formalized operational concept. 
the semantics of the program code provide an image vector of utilization. So one can think of that through the process of these players which interact in ways by the process, uh, by the protocol defined, the, the artwork itself is generated. Only the interaction of players generate this infinite changing artwork, so stray light can be played theoretically without any interface as all relevant actions and processes, inclusive of the rendering of the artwork takes place in the contract itself. So what you see there uh, on the screen is a um, sort of game in which four termites um, <coughs> develop over a certain amount of time, and you see that in the beginning they don't have any interactions, while at one point they essentially morph into each other and uh, interact with each other. So the last sort of category or idea which I would throw out is um, defining and automating economic flows. So artists working conceptually with NFTs have proposed the connection of NFTs to contract-based con conceptual work relatively early on. One of the best examples of this is Digital Zones of Imagery, Pictorial Sensibility by Mitchell F. Chan. And in Art Historic, there are also a long canon of works that deal with value and economic systems. Um, here's, yeah, here's the work. Most of these works function as utopian counter designs to the working of a capitalist economy. Um, this goes so far that Eve Klein proposed, for example, artworks as a reserve currency in the 70s. Uh, however, I still like to focus on certain historical experiments that Sophia Kras called artistic stock holding. And these experiments are interesting because they interact with the market in a way in which sometimes it's hard to recognize what is the artwork, what is the art, and in general to classify this as art. So one of these, and this is the last example I will present today, is uh, Leslie Wien's profit system, which consisted of a press release and an advertising published in newspapers and magazines, publish, publish, publicly announcing the first acquisition of 500 common shares of the Cassett Cartwright Corporation for around $3,000 in March 1969. And then after a few months later, the sell of those same shares for around $7,000. So making a net profit of 220 cents, uh, uh, sorry, of 220%. Um, so with this, um, ask, ask in an interview, Levine sort of denied to be a cynic. His interest was basically dealing with real society systems um, and seeking to subvert the distinction between art and life. He submitted art to the same society, societal and economic constraints as other everyday professional activities, using the same criteria for the measuring of failure or success. So one could say that Les Levine was one of the artists which took the idea of system aesthetics to its most radical conclusion in the sphere of economics. He proposed essentially a practice which is not different from that of an entrepreneur. The question here ultimately, be ultimately becomes how to judge art if every business becomes art. I'm not super interested in this conclusion or discussion in is this art, is this not art, or what does this mean, as more on the practical tools these can provide. How can artists engage in economies and create artistic stock holding and or reroute value flows? All of these example and historical directions point out that smart contracts can be used as a medium to basically design art protocols. Rule-based, multi-user, blockchain-native systems which can engage with the existing flows of capital and reroute and redistribute them. I think that's it.